Nā mai, haere mai, ke te wiki tuarua o Skog Sports Education Programme 2019. Kia ora kids! Kia ora and welcome back to week two. We loved having you on board last week for week one predator free and the kickoff of Conservation Week 2019's programme. We saw some kids doing tracking tunnels, seeing rats and mice, and even stoats like me in their own school backyard. Hey guys! And those of you who enjoyed Skork's journey helping the little bird evade predators using that awesome VR headset. Woo! You guys did awesome! What else did they get up to, Owen? Uh, they also, we had kids showing us them doing bird counts, um, and even starting trapping projects in their schools. Wow. And that was really exciting to see because it's those trapping projects that are going to make the most difference to saving our native birds from introduced predators like stoats, rats, mice, wild cats, hedgehogs and possums which are all eating our native birds. Overall you guys did an amazing job. So, let's have a look at what you guys actually got up to last week. You! We are the Phuket Cogs and Jumboots! Hi, I'm Henry and this is Squawk Squad Week 1 and I'm going to tell you about why we should trap rats. They kill and hurt our native birds, one of our most greatest treasures. She, so she was learning how, how she um, was trapping, tra um, tracking the um, a rat. Okay, so we are making a mouse trap. So um, we're making a mouse trap. We set traps. This is our trap that we made to keep the pests away from our native birds. posters to put on all our classroom windows. <laughs> I carefully pull back the lever and hold it with the palm of my hand. Hello there, Kennedy and Fantail. Don't even go the opossum, but I want to eat you and steal your eggs. Girls, what have you got there? Uh, we have a tracking oh, tunnel with mouse prints in there. A rat, a dirty old rat. Squawk, squawk! Squawk, squawk! We're the Rune by Squawk Squad team! Squawk, squawk! That was so cool, kids. Congratulations. We loved your incredible mahi last week, and while you were busy doing that, we were busy seeing if the Kiwi, myself, here at Squawko HQ, could really fly. So, we're going to show you our first attempt. Action! Can Kiwis really fly? No. Over the next six weeks, we're going to keep stepping it up to see if the Kiwi can really fly off higher and higher objects. I'm sure that I can. No, you can't. What we want is your input here, kids. So if you think that that last video of me jumping off the step counted as the Kiwi flying, I want you to give me a thumbs up in your classroom. And if you think that wasn't flying, give me a thumbs down. Come on kids, he was just jumping. He wasn't flying. What do you reckon kids? I could still catch you. Ah, uh, it's probably true. I think this week is probably a thumbs down. But we're going to keep trying. Now let's check into our progress posters to see how far we've come so far. I got really into it last week and I did all the activities and I started a school trapping project. I didn't like it so much so I didn't do any of the activities. Predator free? That's not for me. 
Now we're announcing the prizes for last week's winners who entered some epic videos into our contest. So there are 10 points up for grabs each week and if you log into the prize submission portal which is a Google Excel sheet um, you'll see how we award those points and so that you can also enter your video into this week's competition. So now it's for the really exciting part where we get to announce the five lucky winning classrooms from last week. Um, first of all, I wanted to say a massive thank you to all of the teachers and kids that submitted videos back to us. We really enjoyed watching them and seeing you all get involved with last week's activities. But, unfortunately, there can only be five lucky classrooms that won. So, those five classrooms are, in no particular order, Kahu Class in Colville School, Room 5 from Cockle Bay School, Huatoki Classroom in St. Plus X School in New Plymouth. The Senior Class from St. Teresa's in Bluff. And Room 4 from Henry Hill School. So those five lucky classrooms will win a Squawk Squad care package, which gets you a Good Nature A24 rat trap, um, a share in a Squawk Squad trap at our next sanctuary at Punakaiki, some extra virtual reality headsets and a few Squawk Squad t-shirts as well. Enjoy! Now we're jumping into this week's topic. First up, I've got a question for you. What's faster than a V8 supercar, but rarer than a Kiwi? Hmm, I don't know. Do you guys? If you guessed the Carrera, the New Zealand Falcon, then you'd be correct. Whoa, it's faster than a V8 car? Yeah. That's awesome. This week's topic is focused all around New Zealand's birds of prey. Things like the karerea, the ruru, which sounds like this, or the legend of the Haast Eagle. And in particular, we're going to focus on the unlikely relationship between the karerea and our New Zealand pine plantation forestry. Pine plantation forestry is made up of those giant pine trees you may have seen around your school or your town. They're kind of like giant Christmas trees without the lights. <laughs> the largest population of New Zealand falcons can be found in the Kaingaroa pine plantations. Did you know that? Mm. And in Tao Māori, there's a whakatoki that says, Kite ora na karere, kite ora tatu katoa. If the falcons are alive, we're alive. It's awesome to see the New Zealand forestry industry making a sincere effort to protect our New Zealand falcon, the karerea. We're going to jump and see some of the awesome work that they're doing with Wingspan Birds of Prey Trust. The wonderful thing about working with a conservation program in places like pine forests is that they do have in place forest stewardship. Now that means that they need to look after the environment, look after conservation issues, and that's all um, because they want to, but also it helps with our international markets. So to have that sign off is so important for a bird like Kariiria. It will be pine forests that save New Zealand falcon, and uh, we're just delighted to be part of the whole process from, from trees through to paper. The key thing is that when we see a falcon, or one of our staff or workers sees a falcon, they report it to Wingspan. Uh, and this time of the year when the falcon are breeding is really important because Wingspan can come out and find out where they are, and then they'll advise us on what should we do about it. And what should we do? Well, actually leave them alone is the most important thing. Sometimes that means we have to move our operations at some cost, but we're willing to do that because falcon are very important to us as a species, and as I said, they, they are an apex species, they're our panda bear, and uh, even, even shown on our logo. This week's prizes are all about New Zealand's birds of prey. Look at this kids, do you know what this is? This is something really special and really rare. And really disgusting. <laughs> this is owl vomit, because owls can't digest fur and bones from their prey so they have to cough up these little pallets. We're sending these out to the top 10 classrooms this week so that you can dissect them and see what the owl was eating. 
Yucky. <laughs> That's super cool. We've also got a ton of other cool prizes, like these Kareerea tote bags and these awesome Birds of Prey posters from the Wingspan Birds of Prey Centre up in Rotorua. Wow. Check them out. Finally, a massive thank you to the New Zealand Forestry Owners Association for making this whole week happen. We couldn't have done it without you, and it's awesome to see you taking a real stand to save our kareerea in our pine plantation forests. Karawe.